Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the first topic of Form 4 which is called Thin Lenses. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day which states that blowing out someone else's candle won't make yours light brighter. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at locating images by ray diagrams. So lenses can be represented by the symbols shown below. So it is important to note that lenses is simply the plural form of the word a lens. So in our previous class, we did discuss the two types of lenses. We talked of convex lenses, which are also called converging lenses. We also talked of concave lenses, which were called diverging lenses. So in array diagram, these are the symbols that we use to represent a convex lens, which is also called a diverging lens. For example, you can see in this particular ray diagram, we are using this particular symbol, which is a symbol for convex lens. So that means we are using a convex lens in this particular ray diagram. So they are called converging lenses because they usually converge the rays of light after a refraction on those particular lenses. For example, you can see we have some incident rays here. Upon refraction, they are being converged or they are being brought together at a common point. Hence, convex lenses are also called converging lenses. For the case of concave uh, lenses, which are also called diverging lenses, you can see that we use these particular symbols whenever, whenever we are drawing the ray diagrams. So you can see here, this particular symbol is being used. So that simply means we have um, a concave lens, which is being used in this particular uh, ray diagram. And you can see for the case of um, concave or diverging lenses, we have the incident rays, but upon refraction on the lens, the rays are being diverged away from each other. So this one is being moved upwards, whereas this one is being moved downwards. So after refraction of the mirror, the rays are being diverged. And that is why concave lenses are also called diverging lens, because they diverge the rays of light after a refraction on those particular lenses. Now, remember in Form 2, we looked at a topic which was called reflection at curved surfaces. We did look at the convex mirrors and also the concave mirrors. Remember that the only difference between a mirror and a lens is that a mirror causes a reflection, whereas a lens causes refraction. So the following three ways are used to locate the image formed by lenses. So the first way is that a ray of light parallel to the principal axis passes through F for the case of a convex lens after refraction by the lens. Remember F represents the principal focus. For example, consider this particular ray which is incident on my convex uh, lens. So this ray is close and parallel to the principal axis. So this particular black line is our principal axis. Then we have this particular ray which is parallel to the principal axis. So if a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, it passes through F for the case of a convex lens that is after refraction by the lens. So you can see this ray is parallel to the principal axis. Upon refraction on the lens, it is passes through F or it passes through the principal focus F. So that is the first ray. So the same ray can also apply for the case of concave or the diverging lenses, whereby it will state that a ray of light, which is parallel to the principal axis, appears to emerge from F for the case of a concave lens that is after refraction by the lens. So you can see, consider this particular ray here, which is incident on um, a concave lens. So it is parallel to this particular principal axis. So if a ray is parallel to the principal axis, then it will always be refracted in such a way that it appears it appears to be, uh, that is, it appears to emerge from F for the case of a concave lens. So you can see this particular ray, which is being refracted in this way, it appears as though it is emerging or emanating from the principal focus F. So that is for the case of a concave lens that is after refraction. So you can see it is a ray which is close and parallel to the principal axis after refraction on a concave lens, it is actually appearing as, as though it is emanating or originating from the principal focus F. Then the second ray states that a ray of light passing through F for convex lenses, they emerge parallel to the principal axis after refraction by the length. So consider my ray in color uh, blue. 
So you can see this particular ray is passing through the principal focus F upon refraction it is emerging parallel to, th to the principal axis. Remember the principal axis is this particular line in color black. So you can see after refraction my ray is parallel to the principal axis. So a ray of light passing through F for the case of convex lenses because here we are using a convex lens which is represented by this particular simple then that ray will emerge that is after refraction it will emerge being parallel to the principal axis that is after refraction by the length as shown by this particular ray in purple so that is in blue so similarly for the case of concave or diverging lenses then a ray of light which is appearing to pass through f for the case of concave lens it will always emerge parallel to the principal axis that is after refraction by the length then the third ray is what we call uh, that is a ray of light through the optical center uh, or passes undeviated so this particular ray applies for both um, concave and convex uh, lenses so if you have a ray of light which is passing through the optical center or it will always pass undeviated to undeviate simply means it does not change its direction for example consider my ray in color green so consider this particular ray it is the ray will always emanate from the object so rays of light will always originate from the object towards the mirror then uh, that is towards your image so for example this particular ray is the one in uh, color green is emanating from the object then it passes through O. that is the optical center the optical center is simply a point where your mirror intersects with your principal axis so if a ray of light from the object passes through O, then it will pass undeviated or it does not change any direction it does not change it does not bend to any other direction that is after refraction on the lens same case for the case of um, concave or diverging lens so you can see that your incident ray uh, when it passes through the optical center O, then it passes undeviated or it does not change its direction after refraction on the mirror. Then remember the point of intersection of the two rays will always represent the head of your image. Then you just connect the image to uh, the principal axis. You connect it to the principal axis. So a convex or a converging lens will always produce a real end. Uh, inverted images for all positions except when the object is placed between F and O. For example, consider this particular diagram which has a convex or a converging length as shown by this particular uh, simple here. So you can see this was our object. Then after refraction on the lens, it is actually forming our image which is actually inverted and also in this case the image is diminished or it is uh, reduced in size. So all the, the characteristics of the image form, the image is real. Remember, real image simply means that the image will be formed on the opposite side as the object. So we are saying that images on the opposite side of the lens are usually real, while images on the same side as the object are usually virtual. So because this image is formed on the opposite side of the lens as compared to its original object it means that this image is actually a real that is it is formed by intersection of the real rays and not rays which are actually dotted or virtual so the characteristics are that the image will be real and it is inverted inverted means that it is upside down you can see the object was facing upward whereas the image is facing downward therefore the image is inverted so that is for all positions except when the object is placed between the principal focus F and the optical center O. So you can see that particular um, uh, unique scenario when the object is placed between the principal focus F and the optical center O, then the image formed. This is our image formed. So when the object is placed between F and O, where the image formed is virtual, virtual because the image and the object are on the same side of the mirror. Therefore, the image is virtual and virtual images are usually denoted by dotted lines. Similarly, virtual rays are also denoted by uh, dotted lines as shown in this particular diagram you can also see that the, the other characteristic of the image formed is that the image is actually upright because you can see the object was facing upward the image is also facing upward therefore it is upright or simply erect so images on opposite side of the lens are we call them real uh, images whereas if the image is on the opposite that is on the same side as the object of a lens 
then such an image is said to be virtual or simply imaginary such as this particular uh, image here then for all positions of the object a concave which is also called a diverging lens will always produce images that are upright or erect and which are virtual and diminished for example consider this particular case here so we have our object here so we simply use any of the two rays to locate our image for example in this case i'm using uh, the third ray which is stated that a ray of light um, through the optical center all passes and deviated so you can see this ray from the object uh, passes through all that is it is undeviated that is it does not bend or change its direction then i'm also using um the first law which states that array of light which is parallel to the principal axis now it appears to emerge from f for the case of a concave lens so you can see this is our concave lens so this array which is um, close and parallel to the principal axis upon refraction on the lens actually the ray is refracted in such a way that it appears as though it is emanating from f that is the principal uh, focus so the point of intersection of the two rays actually represents the principle that is the head of your image so this is my image that will be formed so you can see my image is upright because the object was facing up the image is also facing up the image is also virtual because it is formed on the same side as my object that is on the same side of my lens as the object the image is also diminished diminished simply means it is reduced in size you can see the object had a larger size but the image is actually reduced in size therefore we say that it is diminished next we look at graphical representation of the ray diagram so we start by our first example which reads that an object one centimeter high is placed two centimeters from a converging length or focal length three centimeters so the first step we simply uh, draw the lens that we are using in this case which is a converging length which is also called a convex length so we said that the ray diagram simple for uh, a converging or a convex length is this particular symbol here the next step you simply draw uh, the principal axis which is this particular horizontal line it, which is representing our principal axis the next step you simply identify an appropriate scale for the values that we have in this case so i'm using a scale of one centimeter represents one centimeter both for the vertical and horizontal axis so this one simply means that the length of each box will actually be equivalent to one centimeter therefore from here up to the next box is one centimeter from here up to two boxes that is two centimeters so because i'm told that the focal length is three centimeters and we know that the focal length is usually the distance from the optical center up to the principal focus it simply means that for me to find the principal focus i'll simply count three boxes from the lens therefore from the optical center one two three boxes it will take me up to the principal focus because the focal length is three centimeters which is one two three boxes because i'm using a scale of one centimeter represents one centimeter we know that 2f usually corresponds to the center of curvature which is simply uh the radius of curvature the distance from the center of curvature up to uh the lens or the optical center that is the radius of curvature and we know that radius of curvature is equals to two times the focal length so if the focal length is three boxes it simply means that the center of curvature will be two times three which is equivalent to uh six uh boxes or six centimeters therefore the center of curvature which is represented by 2f will be at six uh boxes from the con the from the converging length therefore one two three four five six boxes it will take me to my 2f which is also representing the center of curvature similarly also on the right hand side we count three boxes one two three to take us to our principal focus because the focal length is three centimeter which is the distance from the optical center to the principal focus therefore 2f will simply be equal to times three which is six boxes so again one two three four five six boxes it will take me to my 2f which is the that is the center of curvature once that you have identified that you now go to other details of that are provided so we are told that an object is one centimeters high it is placed two centimeters from the converging length so based on our scale one box represents one centimeter so two centimeters from the converging length will simply be equivalent to two boxes therefore from the optical center i count two boxes one two boxes it will take me to the position of 
my object. Then I'm told that the height of the object is one centimeter. Therefore, from uh, the principal axis, I simply take one box, which is equivalent to one centimeter. So that is the height of my object. Therefore, this is my object. Once you have the values of f to f and your object, you simply uh, choose two, any two appropriate rays and use them to locate the position of your uh, image because you are told to determine it by graphical construction. So I'm going to use two rays. So the first ray that I'm going to use is a ray which states that um, that is a ray of light uh, passing through the optical center will always pass undeviated. Therefore, you can see the rays of light will always originate from the object. Then if that particular ray passes through the optical center, then the ray will continue undeviated or it does not bend towards any other direction as shown by this particular ray. Then I use the second ray which states that a ray which is close and parallel to the principal axis will always uh, be go through F or it will be refracted through F such as this ray shown here. Therefore, if you observe these two rays, you see on the right hand side, they are appearing to diverge each other. So that means even if you continue uh, extending these particular rays, they will never meet. That is on the downward side or on this right hand uh, side. However, if we extend these rays towards the left hand side, they are appearing to come and converge each other. And we said that the point of intersection of those two rays represents the head of your uh, the image. So that means I'll simply extend this particular ray towards this uh, direction that is towards the behind the mirror which is actually the negative direction and therefore I use dotted lines because uh, no real rays will actually exist in this uh, direction. So these rays are actually virtual that's why I'm using uh, imaginary lines or dotted lines. So the point of intersection of those two rays will, re will represent the head of my image. Therefore, I simply connect the, the head of my image from this particular point. Then I connect it uh, to the principal axis such that it is it meets the principal axis at an angle of 90 degrees. So this dotted, uh, this is my, that is, this is my virtual uh, image. So it is virtual because the image and the object are on the same side of the mirror. Therefore, we said such an image will always be virtual. And virtual images are represented by dotted lines. Similarly, the virtual rays are also represented by dotted lines. But real rays are represented by a continuous line. Same case to the uh, the real, uh, that is the real images are also represented by the continuous lines. So we are told to find the position of the image formed. So the position simply means we measure the distance of the, uh, the image formed from the mirror. All distances are usually measured from, uh, that is the length in this particular case. So from the length, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six centimeters or simply six boxes for us to get our, uh, to get our, the image. Therefore, the image is six centimeters from the lens that is and on the same side as the object and that is why our image is actually virtual remember the scale is one centimeter represents one centimeter therefore uh six boxes will just represent six centimeters then roman 2 we are told to find the size of the image the size simply means the height of that particular image so we simply count the vertical boxes of our image we have one two three vertical boxes because we are using a uniform scale both on the vertical and the, on the horizontal axis of one centimeter represents one centimeter it simply means that one two three boxes will simply represent three centimeters therefore my image is actually three centimeters tall then roman three we are required to determine the nature of the image formed so the nature will simply be you simply state the characteristics of the image formed one of the characteristics is that the image is actually virtual because the image is formed on the same side as the object that is on the same side of the uh, lens as the object. We said that such images will always be virtual and are represented by dotted lines. Therefore, the image formed is virtual. The other characteristics is that the image formed is upright or erect. So upright because the our object was facing upward. Also, the image is also facing upward. Therefore, the image formed is actually upright or erect. Then the other characteristics is that the image formed is actually magnified because the image formed is larger than the our original object. 
Then uh, Roman 4, we are required to determine the magnification of the image formed. So earlier on, we know that magnification is given by the image distance divided by the object distance. So the image distance is simply the distance of the image from our lens. Therefore, we had one, two, three, four, five, six centimeters. So V, the image distance is six centimeters. Then the object distance is one, two. So simply two centimeters. So magnification is image distance over object distance, which is equal to six centimeters over two centimeters, which gives us three. Again, remember magnification is a ratio. Therefore, it does not have any units. Similarly, magnification can also be found by taking the height of the image divided by the height of the object. So height of the image, we have found it as uh, one, two, three centimeters. So height of the image is three centimeters. And the height of the object was only one box. Huh? That is one box, which represents one centimeter. So three centimeters over one centimeter, you simply get a magnification of three. Then I have an exercise here that I recommend you should try and also gauge whether you have understood this particular example. Next, we look at our second example, which reads that an object two centimeters high is placed five centimeters from a diverging length or focal length two centimeters. So similarly, the first thing we simply draw the lens that we are using in this particular case, which is a diverging length, which is also called a concave length. So we said that this is our ray diagram simple for the con concave lens or the diverging length. Then the next thing you simply draw your principal axis, which is this particular horizontal line here. So these are our principal axis. Then the next step, you simply identify an, an appropriate scale. Again, I'm also using a uniform scale, both for the vertical and horizontal axis of one centimeter represents one centimeter. So that simply means that each box, the length of each box will actually be equivalent to one centimeter. So because I'm told that the focal length is two centimeters and we know that the distance from the optical center to the principal focus represents the focal length, it simply means that to find F, I'll simply count two boxes, one, two boxes, so I get to my principal focus. Then 2F is usually twice the length of the focal length or simply the radius of curvature is twice the focal length. Therefore, if F is two boxes from my lens, it means that my 2F will be two times two, which is actually four boxes from my lens. So one, two, three, four boxes, I'll get to 2F. Same thing on the right hand side, two boxes, one, two, I get to my F because my focal length is two centimeters. That's why I'm counting two boxes because I'm also using a scale of one centimeter represents one centimeter. Therefore, one box is actually one centimeter. So two boxes would represent two centimeters. Then 2F will actually be four uh, boxes. So that is one, two, three, four boxes. I get to my point of 2F. The next step is simply to draw your object. So we are told that the object is two centimeters high, then it is placed five centimeters from a diverging length. So five centimeters uh, from this scale will simply represent five boxes from my length. So five boxes, one, two, three, four, five boxes. So my object will be five centimeters from the length. Then the height of the object is two centimeters. And you, we are said that we are also using a vertical scale of one centimeter represents one centimeter so two centimeters will simply be two boxes from the our principal axis so one two so this is my object which is two centimeters from my principal axis it is also five centimeters from uh, my lens once you have the object the position of 2f and the position of f you can now use any two appropriate rays to um, identify or to find your position of the image that is formed so again i'm using two rays so I'm using a ray, which is an um, array of light passing through the optical center, will always pass undeviated. So you can see this particular ray is passing through the optical center and therefore it is undeviated or it passes without bending. Then the other ray that I'm using is that array of light, which is parallel to the principal axis. You can see this is my principal axis. So you can see that this ray from the object, it is parallel to the principal axis. It will always be refracted in such a way that it appears to be originating or emerging from the principal focus F. Therefore, the point of intersection of these two rays represents the head of our image. Again, this particular ray on this side, I'm using dotted lines because this is the virtual side of this particular uh, ray, but the other side is actually the positive side of the ray. So we say that if 
an image and the object will be on the same side of the length, then such an image is virtual, and therefore all the rays that are forming that particular image, they should also be virtual. That's why I'm using a dotted line here to show that the ray is virtual on this other side. So this point of intersection represents the head of my image, so I simply connect my image to the principal uh, axis. So this is my image which is dotted because it is on the same side uh, of the length as my object and therefore it is virtual. So I'm told to find the position. So position is simply the length, the horizontal length of the uh, image from the optical center. So you can see from the optical center I have one box then 0.4. Therefore the image is 1.4 centimeters from the lens and it is also on the same side of the object. That is the image and the object they are, they are on the same side of my lens. That is the diverging length. Then Roman 2, I want they want us to find the size of the image. So that is simply the height of the image. So we said that vertically we are also using a scale of one centimeter represents one centimeter. So if we go up to one box that will be one centimeter. So if you observe this image it is getting up to this particular point which is actually 0 0.6 centimeters of that particular box therefore uh, my object my image is 0 0.6 centimeters tall then roman 3 the nature of the image formed you simply give the characteristics of the image formed so one because the image is formed on the same side as the object of the left of the object it simply means that the image formed is actually virtual that's why we are using dotted uh, line. So the image is virtual. The other characteristics is that the image formed is actually upright because you can see the object was facing upward. The image is also facing upward. Therefore, it is upright. Then the other characteristic is that the image formed is diminished or reduced in size. So you can see our object was actually uh, very large, but the image is reduced in size. Therefore, we say that the image is diminished or it is smaller than the object. Then Roman 4, they want us to find the magnification, uh, that is the magnification. So we know that magnification is equals V over U, where V is the image distance from the length and U is the object distance from the length. Therefore V, our image distance from the length, we had already computed it up here as 1.4 centimeter. So the distance uh, of the image from the length was one box, then 0.4. So it was 1.4 centimeter. Then the distance of the object from the lens was actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 centimeters. So 1.4 divided by 5 centimeters will get a magnification of 0 0.28. Remember magnification is a ratio, therefore the units cancels out, therefore it is just a constant. So it is also important to note that whenever you get a magnification which is less than 1, for example 0 0.2, 0 0.1, it simply means that the image formed is actually diminished or reduced in size. But if you get a, ma a value of magnification which is greater than 1, for example 1.52, it simply means that in that case the image formed is actually magnified or the image is larger than the uh, object. But if you get a magnification which is equal to 1, it means that in that case the image has the same size as the object. That is there is no magnification taking place because the object will be equal to the image. That is when you get a value of magnification which is equal to 1. Lastly, I have an exercise here that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the examples that you have just done. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that blowing out someone else's candle won't make yours light brighter. So the quote is warning us against being jealous of other people's success. Recall that you don't achieve your dreams by discouraging others from achieving theirs. Therefore, we should therefore avoid unhealthy competition and instead focus on lifting uh, each other up by collaborating and combining our efforts towards achieving our dreams. Therefore, there are two ways of becoming the most successful uh, person in the world. One is by destroying all successful people in the world so that you remain as the only successful person. And the second way is by working hard so that you rise above all successful people in the world. Um, you rise above all successful people in the world. So I suggest that you adopt the second method of working hard and collaborating with other successful people so that you can all become successful. Actually, you gain nothing by destroying others. And lastly, recall that 
True success is not measured by the amount of wealth one has accumulated over time. Rather, true success is measured by the number of people you have helped to achieve their small dreams. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.